All right. It's time to end this argument once and for all. I need everyone to sit down and engage because today I'm gonna put aside my typical cheerful self and get into my feelings a bit. So buckle up because it's gonna be one of those episodes. Metal as we know it has been around since the 1960s and to this moment people are still confusing who actually started it all. And from there, who created all of the subgenres of metal that we've become obsessed with like prog metal, gent, deathcore, and metalcore. But in this episode, I'm going to go over the people that started these genres, who is carrying the torch today, and what are the specific characteristics that go into them. So if you wanna become one of those annoying people that uh, put every single band into a different category, feel free to use this video as your explanation. And we're talking about metal bands today, my friends. So if this is something that you really enjoy and want to see done for other genres, make sure to leave it in the comments below. So what's happening, fam? Miami here with JST, and for a big portion of my life, most would have called me a metalhead. I was in my first metal band when I was 17 called Fight to Win. We were actually the number one unsigned metal band in the United States on MySpace back then, even though we only had one single. This actually sparked the idea for this video because there was a big backlash that we were ranked there for a couple of months because we weren't a traditional metal band. Just a pop punk band with metal elements like a day to remember. The metal gatekeepers eventually stripped us of our keys and we went into obscurity. But this had me in my feelings for a bit. Why did the metal community have such an issue considering we had so many elements of metal in our music? So let's get into the origin. First, who created heavy metal? This might be the easiest of them all or so you would think, my friends. The three bands most noted for creating what was called heavy metal then are and always will be Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, and Black Sabbath. But did they actually create heavy metal or just popularize it? The style of heavy metal was what brought in distorted guitars, heavy solos while carrying a blues and psychedelic aspect. But is that what we consider heavy metal today? If you really had to ask who I think was the first to define heavy metal as we know it, it was without a doubt Judas Priest. A similar theme between the original Trinity is they were using a lot of blues styled playing that isn't what we typically associate with heavy metal. Judas Priest took all that away and created the genre that we all know and love. They walked so that subgenre bands like Avenged Sevenfold, Trivium, and Motionless and White could run. Motionless and White has one of my favorite songs actually called Don't Push the Red Button. But that kind of contradicts my philosophy on life because there is a red button that I need you to push, that subscribe button and notification bell. So uh, if y'all were wondering if my transition game was slacking, it's not, it's still crazy. And I'm just leveling up. Let's talk about the genres that started to break off from heavy metal. Since we brought up Judas Priest, I kind of want to get into power metal. And the reason I want to bring this up is because if it wasn't for Rob from Judas Priest, that style of vocal for power metal wouldn't have come about. Also, the guitar style of power metal wouldn't have come about either. So what makes something power metal? One, uh, it typically has fantasy-based lyrics about adventures, dragons, the mythical of sorts. Not my favorite theme, but let's stick to facts about what makes the genre, not my opinion. It also takes the basic ideas of heavy metal, but blends it with speed metal, while sticking to a concept that is very uplifting and epic. Huge choruses, you know, galloping drums, that sort of thing. The person that was the father of power metal was Ronnie James Dio from Rainbow. His fantasy styled lyrics about castles and folklore paved the way for Halloween, who was definitely the first band to drop a power metal album. Other notable power metal bands are Blind Guardian, Stradivarius, and Sonata Arctica. I'm just remembering the cover I did for Nevermore, actually. The River Dragon Has Come. Was Nevermore a power metal band disguised as a heavy metal band? A question for another time, but onto one that I think you'll all wanna talk about, prog metal. I need a glass of water, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's too much to talk about. I'm feeling like a SpongeBob in that first episode, you're like, Sandy, I need water. Anyways, I'm glad to say this is a pretty easy one because I'm from Connecticut and uh, we def have the rooted origin of prog metal from a band called Fate's Warning. So what are the determining factors of a prog metal band? Pretty simple. Mix heavy metal and progressive rock. That's it. No big mystery here. Double bass, distorted guitars, weird polymeters, and syncopation. And you pretty much got it. The big three of the genre were Fate's Warning, Dream Theater, and Queensryche. They made it possible for bands like Symphony X, 
But that brings up another genre in our list, symphonic metal. Actually, let's hold off on that because uh, the direct descendant of prog metal for our current era is without a doubt, gent. Or as we should call it, modern progressive metal. But instead we call it gent because that's the sound a guitar makes when you're palm muting a down-tuned guitar with high distortion. Sure, makes sense. Coined by Misha and Periphery, the sound of Gent was actually started by the band Mashuga. Other bands that later popularized this are Animals as Leaders, Tesseract, uh, which is my personal favorite, and Periphery and Textures. Think of prog metal, but just more of everything. More syncopation, more polymeters, more distortion, more strings. Just more. But I don't know how I got all the way to Gent without mentioning one of the earliest forms of metal, thrash metal. This is probably the most famous grouping of bands in metal to be known as a collective. Most just refer to them as the big four, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. These are easily some of the biggest names in metal today. Metallica especially because they were lucky enough to be on Stranger Things final season. Uh, I'm sure this will def get them trending on TikTok and they might actually become a household name. For those that saw Stranger Things, you get the joke. And for those that haven't, you can write your hate down in the comments, you know, or go watch that episode, it's, it's a great one. Anyways, the defining things of thrash metal are bringing the shred, being upbeat and fast, wild soloing and double bass. Double bass didn't really become a mainstay in metal until this point, so thank them for the brutal breakdowns that would come later on in deathcore and metalcore. But a minute ago, I was talking about Symphony X, so I have to get into symphonic metal. Therion was the first symphonic metal band. But the thing about symphonic metal, don't crucify me, I don't think it ever had enough legs to stand on its own. It needed to attach itself to other genres to gain popularity, like symphonic power metal, think X Japan, symphonic death metal, like Children of Bodom, or symphonic black metal, like Cradle of Filth and Dimmu Borgir, you know? Bands like Dimmu and Children of Bodom made it possible for bands like Shadow of Intent and Lorna Shore to run. The main characteristics to be able to point out symphonic metal is anything that relies heavily on orchestral elements, classical music, and choirs. You hear those things? It's a blend of symphonic metal and something. But since we were just talking about Shadow of Intent, let's talk about death metal. The first thing to keep in mind with death metal is extreme growls, you know, trem picking, wild double bass, and blast beats. The band Death is considered to be the pioneer of the genre, uh, and also you can throw in Possessed and Necrophasia. Roadrunner Records is responsible for the huge rise in popularity of death metal bands. The people carrying the torch for death metal right now, I'd say it's more like deathcore bands are carrying the torch for death metal bands of yesteryear, and that's a blend of metalcore and death metal. So I guess, Metalcore is up next on our list. I don't know how I got so far into this list without mentioning the genre that got this channel so popping in the first place, Metalcore. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there's an interview with Alex from Atreyu in which he says, we invented Metalcore. That may sound cocky, but I don't care. We predate Poison the Well and Kill Switch Engage and all those bands. I've been doing this since I was literally 12 years old. But if you go back and fact check him, I'm pretty sure he's right. The concept of the metalcore breakdown that we get down to in the pit does seem to have been perfected by Atreyu and followed by bands like As I Lay Dying, Kill Switch Engage, Shadows Fall. Other characteristics of metalcore are thrash and scream vocals that were typically accompanied with a clean vocalist who would sing the choruses. Uh, let's not forget gang chants for crowd participation during shows. And now that we've explained metalcore and death metal, we can talk about their love child, Deathcore. Take everything about death metal, add metalcore breakdowns, and sometimes even like a hardcore two-step, gutturals, and uh, at one point even pig squeals. Not gonna lie, I'm really glad that phased out. The red chord is known for starting the genre, but Despised Icon definitely had a role in popularizing it. They started a wave that brought in bands like All Shall Perish, Suicide Silence, Carnifex, and even Bring Me the Horizon. The torch today is carried by bands like Shadow of Intent, Mental Cruelty, and Body Snatcher. But let's go back to one more thing from yesteryear. We skipped over hair metal, right? Like we ought to talk about that. Glam metal was a huge part of the 80s. The attributes of this are bringing in pop vibes, but anthemic rock anthems and of course, power ballads. The likes of David Bowie inspired this movement from which glam rock evolved to glam metal. The first band to really implement this into the metal sense was Quiet Riot. They walked so bands like Motley Crue, 
Kiss, Twisted Sister, and Bon Jovi could run. It's also the era where Eddie Van Halen became known while pushing the genre forward for shred guitarists. The look of hair metal was basically a ripoff of glam rock, big hairstyles, makeup, costumes, and lots of shiny clothing. But glam metal became more popularized, so it brought more light to this. Bands that kept this look alive in the last decade are Black Veil Brides, Gemini 5, that kind of thing. But this genre didn't really last that long after the 80s because the 90s brought in grunge. And this is a tough one because grunge had elements of heavy metal, but fused it with rock. And I don't know if I can put this in the metal category, you know, just like they did to our band. So we're gonna skip to another G, Grindcore. There are a lot of people that wanna take credit for starting Grindcore, but it's pretty simple. Same band that popularized the blast beat, same one that lit the flame, Napalm Death. Characteristics of Grindcore are having extremely short songs, even short by today's standards. You know, we have songs hitting number one on the billboard at two minutes. But grindcore songs can be a few seconds long, or even one second, if you listen to Napalm Death. Uh, distorted bass and guitars, blast beats, and literal noise. I used to be into grind, but it's been a while. A lot of grindcore lyrics are punk themed, have to do with conflicting political agendas and the like. <sighs> so we went over heavy metal, power metal, prog metal, gent, symphonic metal, deathcore, death metal, metalcore, grindcore, thrash, glam, and I think we can all agree, there's just too many genres and labels, man. And I forgot doom metal. You know, this ended up being so much longer than I originally planned, but I guess there's just a million things to talk about in defining these genres and separating them from each other. But in reality, they are all just a huge melting pot that boiled down into the umbrella that we all know and love called metal. Are there any that I missed besides doom metal? I feel like I gotta do a whole episode on that now. Do you agree with the bands that I said started these genres and with the ones that I said are carrying the torch today? Leave it in the comments below and I will chat with you fine people like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notification. So when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, I am out of here. Mic drop. <laughs> Except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing because that get really expensive, even if it is a piece of sure. Later.